there party people. We're on our third day of tasting together. And after all that animal talk yesterday, I really, I wanna address the elephant in the room. It's very possible that at some point on our journey together, and maybe it's happened already, that you're gonna try a beer that honestly, like it's just not your thing. And I'm here to tell you that that's okay. Honestly, it's probably, it's great that you hit that. If we never dance on the edges of our beer comfort zone, then that means that we could possibly be missing out on some of the most amazing boozy surprises. How on earth are you going to find out that sours make your cheeks pucker in a way that forces you to smile if you never give them a go? Now, let's see, I'm giving you guys room to sit along with me here. I'm not gonna make these videos and just not drink with you. But the key when you have a bad beer day is to really pay attention and identify what you don't like and put some words to it so you can avoid it in the future. Here are four quick tips and four things that I'd like you to do when a beer just doesn't feel like it's for you. Number one, like I said, focus in on what you didn't like. Was it too sweet, too bitter? For me, the beers that I don't like, they're just a little too boring. Number two, push your flavor descriptors into the feelings words that we've been working on together. Maybe you don't like clever beers. Maybe you don't like arrogant beers. Like I said, I'm not a fan of boring beers, which means I'm not a fan of shy or timid beverages. Number three, I want you to write down these ideas someplace. I'd encourage you to use this guide, like if you just wanna always keep it with you or a note on your phone, a little beer journal, but just write it down or you're not gonna remember it. And then finally, my fourth tip is, the next time you shop or the next time you're at a brewery, don't avoid the style, but instead focus on avoiding those yucky feelings. But it's not the style's fault you didn't like it. For me, on my beer journey, as I teach different beer classes, I've heard individuals say that they just don't like one style of beer. They don't, or like just a general feature of beer. I don't like hops. I don't like IPAs. I don't like dark beers. But then when I follow up with how many times have you tried this? How many places have you tried this? They often respond with one or two. So often, like, again, just what I'm trying to encourage you to realize is it's not the style that we dislike. It's just that little baby sliver. And that's okay that you don't like it. We're just going to work on it. Now, the personal story for me, I avoided IPAs for a super long time, but really what I wanted to avoid were beers that were assertive and sharp. I actually, I have one in my fridge right now that I'm just like not looking forward to drinking because I know it's gonna be assertive and sharp. But let me tell you guys, there's a whole lot of IPAs in this universe that are neither of those things that honestly, I'm bummed that I've been missing out on because I just, I swore off IPAs for a while. So that, that's what I'm doing right now. An IPA, but a friendly IPA. And I'm gonna leave the assertive IPAs to somebody else to drink. All right, on to today's tasting sheet. Now yesterday, with our animals, we started getting a better sense of texture, movement, and temperament in our beverages. Now, we're gonna give them some bigger personalities. High school was a wild ride for me. I don't know about you guys. I don't know who's watching this video, but for me, it was a little bit of a wild ride. You enter in as a survivor of the hellscape that is middle school and mean girls and like figuring out who you are and changing body and you exit with a lot more certainty about like just who you are and what you want to be and you're excited to go into the world. So I like to think about my beers as existing in high school because there's so many personas and cliques that we can play around with. So today I want you to put your drink in the stereotypical clique. If you need some ideas or if you've forgotten what clicks are like cheers to you um you can either rewatch mean girls or like let me just give you some examples so we're thinking like all right if we go into our flavor words and we think our beer is unique and complex then maybe this is a theater kid or this is like an art student maybe if this beer is strong and simple Again, we're stereotyping. It's okay to do this just right now because we're not talking about real people, but if your beer is strong and simple, then maybe we're talking about some of the athletes at the school. We're talking about the jock click. 
Now, as it's been true on past days, the click itself doesn't really matter all that much. What I want you guys to practice doing is think about why are we putting that beer there? What feeling words do we have? And this is just a fun way to do it. Now, if you want some Natalie bonus points, once your beer has found its place in high school, think about where you fit in high school and your relationship to that click. Were you in it? Were you friends with it? Or maybe they were your worst enemies. That is going to tell you your relationship with that click. I'm just curious, like drop a few comments, send me a message or an email. If you were a popular girl and you classify this as a popular girl, was that your click? Or like maybe you hated popular girls and that's what it is and you hate this beer. So I'm just curious. Let me know what you're thinking. Quick reminder, before you wrap up today, go ahead and rate your beer along the bottom so that we can compare apples to apples. If you're ready to keep drinking with me, go ahead and click on the next video. If not, I'll catch you next time. Cheers.